Hi everyone, welcome, happy Saturday. I am so glad to be back with you guys. I'm back from East Texas for a beautiful Saturday morning. So good morning, everyone. I'm DC Gomez. I am an indie author. I'm also a coach, I'm a speaker, I'm a motivational author, all the fun stuff. Above all, I am a dreamer, which is the reason I'm here today. I started this series to help people truly live their best life now, to find tips and ideas on how to conquer some of the things that you're facing and get you to the next step. So this is why we're today. Today we're gonna to talk about, all about being willing to stretch. But before we get started, go ahead my friends, give this video a like, share with somebody, invite somebody to come with us. I truly believe growing is so much better when we do it together. So we're building a community and we're truly trying to get us together, to get us to the next step and to truly grow with each other. So if you know anybody, go ahead. Also at any point in time during the show, write me a message. If you have a question, I'll be looking down to make sure that I read your comments, to make sure that I address them. If I don't do them live, I will go back and reply. Or if you have a question, send me a message, anything. We're here to kind of get us to the next step. So are you guys ready to jump in? Being willing to stretch. Last week, from Savannah, of course, we talked about going outside our comfort zone and truly taking those steps to get us there. And I talked a little bit about going to conventions and get us to those steps. So we're gonna talk about stretching and they go hand in hand. So this one, she's kind of a little plain on everybody. So as we get ready to start, ooh, we have some people on joining us. So oh, hello, Miss Devian. Hello, Miss Lavanna, who is joining us. Hello, Miss Brandy. Oh, this is so exciting. This is absolutely a blast we're going to have so much fun today so make sure you say hi to each other comment and let's get going so it's all about being intentional this is the part of where stretching but going outside your comfort zone it doesn't just happen as much as i would like to tell you you can just wake up one day and bam you're doing something you're not used to it doesn't you actually have to go ahead and make it a point you actually have to decide to do this so i want you guys to do an exercise with me today if you want to write it down, you can. You know I'm crazy about everybody writing things down, but it's not necessary. But I want you guys to kind of take a few minutes, just kind of sit back and truly sit down and tell me. You know, you can do it to yourself, write it down. Write down when was the last time or the different occasions that you did something that A, was outside of your comfort zone, something that kind of scared you, something that you knew was going to be good for you, but you had some hesitation. I want you to write down all the different times that you did something that either somebody didn't believe you could or something that you thought was completely radical and outside. I want you to take a moment. So let me give you a little example. Last week, I was in Savannah, Georgia, as I told you guys, and we went a nice live from there, but I drove. So here's the reality that most people don't know. I am terrified of driving which sounds bizarre to everybody because obviously we drive all everywhere. I am truly terrified. It's one of those phobias in my life. Like I have nightmares. I stress all day. It was one of those things that I was going literally from Texas to Georgia. And I was looking for reasons like, do I really have to go? Is that really necessary? Can I, because I'm going, I decided to do this by myself. So one of the things that I literally had to talk to myself about is, why am I doing this? What does this mean? Why is it too late to sign out of this? So here's what I want you guys to think about when you're thinking of stretching. Stretching this is an individual affair, my friends. It's not something that you're going to be doing as a group. And why am I doing this for you guys? Because you're probably going, why is this important? A lot of people driving is really exciting. I have friends who they enjoy it. It's a joy. They have fun. They relax. They clear their minds. To me, probably because I did a lot of driving while I was deployed in the military in Iraq cross country, it has a whole different feel. It is definitely a much more action packed event. I'm very ADD and after a while I'm nervous and I'm itchy and I'm twitchy and driving becomes extremely stressful. But at the same time, it's a necessary evil for my career. I go everywhere. I am officially on the road 25% of my job. I am going to events, I'm going to conventions, I'm meeting people, and they're not short, short trips. You know, I'm going Houston, now to Georgia, I'm going to Corpus, I'm going five, eight, 14 hours across the country. Why is this something that you guys are looking, how is that stretching? We currently live in a society, my friends, that tells us every day, we're conditioned to compare ourselves to people. 
And we're always comparing ourselves to people who are truly doing things on a grand scale. Miss Debbie just pointed out that she loves to drive, so you can understand why my driving fear seems a little like you, you don't like to drive. What? It is one of those things that's going to kind of make you go, say, what? We're conditioned to compare ourselves. We're conditioned to look at, I usually say, you know, across the window to other people or Facebook or Instagram. You're looking across the board. Just put it this way, my friends. Forbes just released a list of the highest paid TikTok stars which I thought, you know, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, you have the highest paid TikTok star is 19 years old and she made $5 million last year. Think about it this in the perspective of, I have been writing for three years. I had last year, we pushed out six books and five was nowhere millions categories in my world. How do you compete with that? What does that mean? How do you face that? Here's the thing. We're not here to compete for each other. We're not here to try to compete with the next best star, with the next reality show. That's not what we're here for. We're here to grow. We're here to develop. We're here to be happy. We are here as an individual purpose to truly find what makes us extremely happy and present and having a best life now. Our best life now doesn't have to compete with somebody else's doing. It is a literally an individual sport. It's just not an expectator sport. You can't just sit there and wait for things to happen. So one of my fears is always be, and one of my stretching is always going to be, seriously, driving. That's as small as it sounds, it is one of those things. So think about it. And I want you guys to kind of seriously put some, some thoughts into this, because usually we dismiss the things that seem very small to us. We want to look amazing things. If you decided to go back to college, or when you went to college, Think about taking your first class. If you decided to start over, if you dropped out of college and came back, or if you decided as an adult to do it. Think about if you have children. When you send your kids to college, think about that feeling. The feeling of I'm sending my baby to school, which I am always amazed that my parents dropped their only daughter at 18 in New York City and then left. Like, mom, who's watching, I love you. I don't know how you did that. I also don't know how four years later she gave me a kiss and said, okay, go to the military and I love you and I'll be here for you. Those are huge stretching moments for parents. Think about the moment that you decided, I'm going to start a new business or I want to do a side hustle. I love that phrase, by the way. Side hustle is my new thing. I was like, oh, everybody is a side hustle. But think about when you decided to do it. Think of the things that it took to go outside. Think about when you decided if you're going to quit your job or the day that you decided, I'm not taking this, I'm not, oh, you said no. You know, what, did that, what does that mean, my friends? Those are stretching things that we take for granted. Those are the things that we kind of say, we know that we have done it, we have done these huge things, you graduated, you finished high school, you went back to get your GED, you just started to start family, you decided to truly invest in yourself. Those are stretching, because you could have said no at any point in time. So Kayla's just telling me she's, your fear drive is the same as mine. I understand. Think about it every time. So I need a map, a GPS, a compass, and uh, three tanks full of gas. Like I would stop when the tanks have empty because I don't know what's going to happen. So those are little things that I want you to think. Why do we stretch? So here's what I want to share with you guys because I love these quotes. So I want to make sure you guys have it with you. Masterful says, growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be. He actually compares this. This is his law of the rubber band. And if you think about it, a rubber band truly is only useful if it's being pulled, if it's being stretched, if it has some tension. If not, you just have this little plastic thing running around your house that if you're like me, your cat is going to chase it everywhere. You don't know where it's at. But think of the tension. Think about where you are in your life and what got you there. And the sad thing is what got us to the next, to that level is not going to get us to the next one. So we always have to keep growing. Why is that important? My friend, here's the reality. If you have achieved everything you ever wanted in your life, you have full success in everything you wanted, what are you living for? That's the point. Are you just sitting here waiting to die? Because I know a lot of friends, and this is kind of strange, we know a lot of people who have, uh, my brother had the best phrase, he says, I have hit the pinnacle of my life. Dude, you're 26. At the time, he calls me, he was 26, and we had that moment, he's like, you hit the pinnacle of your life, you're 26! 
How can you possibly hit the pinnacle? What are you going to do? He goes, I don't know what to do with myself. I was like, how about pick another goal? How about pick something else? Because he was miserable. He was absolutely sitting there having this moment with me of like, I don't know what to do with myself. I have done everything. I was like, you're 26 years old. You can't possibly have hit the pinnacle of your life. How many of us feel that way? What is your next challenge? What is the next thing? Because if we're not growing, if we're not moving, life becomes stagnant. We become very stuck. So think about it this way, my friends. A lot of people are gonna tell you, I hate my job. And you're going, okay. But they're still there. They're still stuck in this place that they hate. They're still going to this place and not being challenged. They're not growing, they're not expanding, they're going, they're doing the same thing. And that's why you feel stuck. L let's be honest, there's nothing you can do about it to this stuff. So here, look at this phrase again. Think about growth in your own life. Think about it in that perspective. The moment that we stop having tension, the moment we stop having goals, the moment we stop pursuing these things, it is truly the moment, my friends, that we kind of stagnate, we stop going to where we need to be. So here's what I want you guys to start thinking about it. So I made you write this little exercise. If you wrote it, great. If not, you can go back and write it. That's okay. Why am I giving you this? This is what I want all of us to realize. You have done amazing things. And sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit. You have done incredible things so far in your life. Where do you want to go next is the next question. Where is it that you want to go? Why? Where is the next step? Because right now, if you're stuck in your job, Ms. Debbie have said it, being stuck in your job is the one thing. What is it that you're doing? Are you just checking the mark? Are you going through the motions? Are you just sitting there waiting for retirement? I have a lot of friends that said, when I retired, I'm going to do A, B, and C. Why can you do that now? What is stopping you from it? Because a lot of the times when you've retired, do you have the energy? Do you have the strength? Do you really want to do that? So what are you waiting for, my friends? What is it that is going to get you to your next step? So you got to stretch. And it doesn't just happen to your next moment. So let me give you the sad reality because I have to face this every day. Stretching takes place every day. Every single day of our lives, you got to do it to something if you're trying to move forward. I initially, when I started writing, I can tell you right now, I was miserable. I was miserable before I started writing and I needed somebody, I don't know who, to give me permission. I needed somebody to give me permission and validate that it was okay for me to be a storyteller. Don't know who I was waiting for because the permission was hard to come. I actually finally read a book from Liz Guilford who said, I'm giving you permission to write. And I was like, oh, amen. Somebody finally heard. <laughs> but I needed somebody to validate that it was okay, that it wasn't too crazy, that it wasn't too wild. Then I decided we're going to do this. And I committed. Do, do, do. You do that thing that you commit to yourself. And starting is hard. As adults, it is hard to start something new. We have a list, my friends. Let me put it this way. At the time I was 38 years old, Number one, I'm too old. How would I start something new? Where do I start? I was afraid. What are people gonna think? Next thing is, do I have the money? Is it going to be safe? Am I going to succeed? Is it going to be? Put the list in there, like, and I have it written down. I have a list of all the things that truly stop me. What was those things that were holding me back from starting, from being stretched? So once you make your list, then you can seriously look at them and be like, is that realistic? You know what I mean? What are people going to think because I decided to start writing? You know, and sometimes like we talked about it in earlier programs, sometimes we're more afraid what people are gonna think if we succeed than what we're gonna think if we don't because we're terrified of not being inside our group. So I had to face those things and have to literally go outside that comfort zone to take that step. Here's the catch. It doesn't stop because I decided to take that step. I am, when I first started writing, started writing urban fantasy. So I'm writing magic and I'm writing stories and I'm writing about witches and the whole nine yards. Then I decided, mm, I like cozy mysteries. I like contemporary fiction. So I'm going to do a little bit of this. Then I decided we're gonna do some fictions. And here lately I'm doing some devotional. What does that mean as a writer? I don't have a niche. Here's the hard part. I don't have a genre, category, whatever you wanna call it, that puts me in this bubble that is safe which is fun for writing. I love it. I can try different things. And as my brother reminded me, I can play in all different ponds. 
The problem is it makes it really hard to market. It makes it very, very tricky to figure out where to find your readers because I'm having to move from one side to the other. I'm having to face many different challenges because I don't have anything specific. So I'm having to focus on not on a niche, but a brand. And I'm having to redefine myself every time. I'm having to look at what I enjoyed and what I love in terms of what is fun for me. Why am I doing it? What does success means to me? And how does this apply to my career? This career that I've chosen. I'm going to have to drive 900 miles. Can you do that? I'm going to write different things that people are not used to. My readers are not used to me writing devotionals. Are they going to like it? Are they going to take it? Is my community going to support me? Those are the things that go in the back of your mind. The fun thing about it is I'm growing. I'm enjoying it. I am a very interactive writer. I'm a little ADD. So my writing is a little bit more like what I enjoy to read. So I had to redefine these things instead of thinking of here is a genre. It's more what is my brand. So for anybody who's writing, for anybody who has a business, for anybody who's in the public, for anybody who's trying to create something, sometimes don't look for that bubble or that box to fit in. Figure out what your brand is. And we're going to talk about brand in one of the upcoming programs. Don't worry about it. But let's discuss it very quickly. Who are you? What do you represent? The hardest thing to change for me ever was to realize that my books were not the product, but that I was and that I had a brand. And my brand, and I'm saying this for DC, which is the pen name, DC Gomez brand is I write quirky. So if you enjoy quirky characters, I write fast paced, I write action, I have lots of excitement, shenanigans. I don't do a lot of curse words, so they're minimum. I don't do gore. You're not going to have splitting body parts and all the details about the blood. You're not going to get that. You're not going to have a lot of sex in it. You know, you might have some steam. I'll give you some steam here and there, but that's not my category. I write books that are very happy ending to some extent, but I have write books that anybody in your family can pick it up. I write books that are designed for anybody from a young adult, middle schooler, all the way up to your grandparents, if you're looking at it that way. And if you're a grandparent, think of your grandbabies and you're reading the same book and being like, really, can that happen? That is the brand. I write books that focus on family. I write books that focus on finding a family. And I write books that are meant to entertain. You know, I have some amazing writers who I love to death, who their work and their brand is to actually push you, is to make you question things, is to inspire you. So everybody has a different brand. What it took me a while to realize is in order to get there, I literally had to push myself. I had to stretch myself. I had to look at myself from a different perspective. This is hard when you want to fit in, when you want to be loved, when you want people to like you. Sometimes in order to get to the next step, you're going to make some people uncomfortable. Everybody's not going to like my books. And I know I got Debbie that says she loves quirky. Thank the Lord, madam. But everybody doesn't. So what does that mean? Is coming to the conclusion that it says, are you okay with being different and being in your own space? So I know I keep going back. Take a look at this and tell me if you still agree with it. Think about the growth. Think about what it means to you. So Ms. Brandy just put an awesome phrase up and comment that I love. Thank you so much. Yes, my my readers do actually read different genres. That's something that I'm very, very blessed and they support me. So one of the things that I realized lately is I wasn't just writing books. I was building a community and Ms. Brandy, thank you because you guys do support. You do love me and you do appreciate the difference in in things that I write. But Think about the actual fact of having to stretch yourself to get there. So let's go back to our exercise that we started. Why did we start it that way? Here's the catch. I wanted you guys to look at where you've been. I want you to think about all the things that you have done that you probably didn't think were completely amazing because it became regular. It became part of your life. If you're a parent, think about all the things you had to do to get with your kids. If you are starting a business or if you're in a job, what did it take you to get promoted? What did it take you to get to the next step? What did it take you to truly move up that ladder? Whatever the ladder might be. So this is what I want you guys to look. It's intentional. 
you have to be willing to do it. If you're trying to move forward, you have to do this on your own. It's not going to happen. It's not going to be an accident. It is not going to be something that you're gonna wake up and it's like, oh my God, I have grown. It doesn't, unfortunately. I, I, I prayed about it. it, doesn't work that way. You have to be intentional. You have to decide. So here's what you need to look. I want you guys to write it down. What are your dreams? I want you to truly write down what is it that you wanna do in the next year, I'm all about do a time frame because let's be honest, I'm a little bit more like five years is a long term for me. Most people's like that's really short. So write down what is your dreams. I want you to truly write down what is it that you want to do. Where do you see yourself? Whether the goal happens to be personal, whether you actually go back to exercise, whether you decided to be spiritual, whatever that part of your life. Remember, growth takes place in many different forms. And you're not having to compete with anybody. You're not looking at what other people are doing. Where do you want to see yourself in the next five years? Where do you want to see yourself in the next five months? Write it down. I want you to kind of go crazy, go big, go wild, whatever you want. Because what I want you to do is next to all your goals is I want you to write one thing. Not huge, not crazy. What is one step you can do today to get you there? If your goal is, I wanna go back to school, I wanna be a massage therapist, I wanna open my business, what is it that that goal might be? It might be as simple as, I'm going to do research classes that I can take to get me there. Or I wanna research if the Chamber of Commerce is offering a training program. I want to research who is in my field that is doing what I want. I've heard the best quote recently that I love from St. Francis Augustus. So he said, do what's necessary, then do what's possible, and when you least expect it, the impossible is happening. So I want you guys to start writing things that you're doing right now, my friends. Do what's possible. What is it necessary for you to do today to get to that dream? And you have to write it down. That's kind of the catch, because that way you have a reference point. A lot of the times, especially with stories, because I'm getting ready to write full speed because we have so much to do. Miss Pamela just says she can't wait for the next book. That makes two of us, trust me. So I'm getting ready to start on this journey again of what am I writing for? And I'm actually getting ready to push myself completely to a whole new spin. I'm getting ready to start writing dystopia. Like I have an entire story of the end of the world and what it's going to be like, or semi end of the world. We're still gonna get you guys there. What is that adventure gonna be like? But I gotta write it down or else I have 500 thoughts in my head spinning around and nothing is getting done. So I want you guys to write it down. What is that dream? What is that goal? What is that new hobby you wanna start? Because here's the part, life is all about growing. Life is all about passion. Life is all about living and doing it to the next step. It's all about forcing ourselves to do something new or else my friends, we're stuck. You're going to get up and this is how that rat race feels like. You get up. You go to work, you come home, you eat dinner, you go to bed. You do it all over again, and then here comes the weekend. And then if you're most adults, you're gonna get up. You're going to, if you're in Texas, you're gonna be mowing your lawn, because my neighbor's mowing like crazy, and I'm like, please wait, please wait. So you're gonna be mowing the lawn, you're gonna be doing laundry, you're gonna wash in some cars, you're gonna cook. You might go to a farmer's market, you might meet some friends, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. And we're stuck, we're stuck in that rat race, we're stuck in that bubble, we're stuck in that world that we completely feel nothing happens. And then we, we're just sitting here waiting to die. I think that's the scary part. What is it that we're doing to get us to our dreams? And our dreams are not going to be the same as everybody else, my friends. Your dreams are not going to be the same as your neighbors or the same as the people in your family. As you're writing your goals, you know I am adamant about protecting them. I'm adamant because we do have absolutely some dream assassins running around. We have those people that you tell them, hey, I want to be an exercise instructor. I want to be a physical therapist. I want to be fill in the blanks. I want to switch my career. I want to start a new job. And the people that we love sometimes will be the first ones to give you 50 reasons why you shouldn't because this could, to, could be bad. And everybody wants to play devil's advocate. Once again, the devil does not need an advocate. He's good on his own. Please don't, don't enroll these people. Don't go sign with these people. I want you to write it down. I want you to give yourself the permission to dream. And if you need somebody to give you permission and sign on on you, let me do it for you. What is that thing that you're dreaming? What is that thing you wish you were doing? What is that thing that actually is holding you back? Because I want you to be truly, who told you you couldn't do it? 
Who in your life said, mm, that's not a good idea? Write down, why? I, do they had an actual reason? Do they know what's in your heart? What is stopping you? Because here's the thing. What happens if you do? Everybody goes, what happens if I don't make it? What happens if you do? What happens if you don't succeed? Mm, what happens if you do? Think about it. Do not be 26, 36, 56, whatever you want to be and tell me I have hit the pinnacle of my life. Okay, now what do we do? So in case you're wondering, yes, my brother hit the pinnacle of his life, according to him at 26. And unfortunately, he was miserable and bored and needed to find something. So he went back to school. He went back and got his master's degree. He went back and applied for a different job. He started a new career. Now we have babies and somehow the pinnacle of his life has not happened. So in case that is, he just had to relook at it. The things that he thought were the all and be all to his life mm, completely changed. So he had to change some stuff. So let me give you some kind of, I wanted to give you something to think about. If you are a writer and you're looking to literally get you started, go check out the podcast. This is kind of like, I, one of my joys, by the way, I have a blast. I didn't think I would enjoy interviewing people as much as I do. I get as much motivation from them as they do. But here's the podcast. It's inside the minds of authors. And I'm getting ready to switch to a different hosting platform that I'll tell you guys about next week. But it's all about getting inside author's head. The one thing I love about it is finding out what motivates them. It's finding out what keeps them completely inspired and what keeps them going. So if you're an aspiring author or if my friends you is interested in finding new authors, check them out. Everything from indies to successful, been doing it for years, everything that you can possibly imagine. The one thing I love about it is how they define success. Each one is different. Each one is all about connecting with their community. Each one is connecting with a reader. And each one is about telling stories. So for those aspiring writers, my aspiring editors, and everybody who's in the creative field, give it a try. I need you to challenge yourself. So for my friends, listen, if you're not into the creative field, but you enjoy it, you can still pick up some good authors. For everybody else who's still trying to figure it out, what is it you want to do? Here's the part. The sky is the limit. You can do anything. You just gotta do something. You can't just sit here and wait for a knock on the door. Granted, all of my stories start with a knock on the door. Yeah, it doesn't happen in the real world. What do you want to do? What motivates you? What makes you excited? What always keeps you coming? If not, you're going to be like a rubber band on top of a table. Absolutely, she's there. Life is going to go by. Life is going to pass you. We have to keep going. So one of my favorite mentors put a phrase. He said, even dead fish go with the flow. And I was like, ooh. Mike, I'm hurt, what? What do we want to do with our lives? So I want to give you permission. I want to inspire you. And Miss Jenny, if I'm inspiring, I love it. Thank you, mission accomplished. I want to inspire you to dream. I want to inspire you to take it to a next level. I want you to do whatever radical, whatever simple, whatever makes you smile and push yourself outside your comfort zone, stretch a little. Go to your community college and sign up for a gardening class. That's one of my goals in the next five years is I want to become a master garden. Why? Because there's three trees in my backyard that needs to be transplanted and I need to figure out how. Figure out how to do a cake decorating class. Figure out how to do basket weaving. And yes, I've done it. You can laugh. It's actually pretty fun and a lot harder than I imagined. So figure out how to do something. Try a new job. Get a side hustle. Do something exciting. Above all, stretch. Stretch outside your comfort zone. Continue to challenge yourself. There has a study has been made that we continue to develop brain cells even in our old age. So no, you're not too old. No, you haven't missed your mark. No, you're not competing with a new TikTok start. Sorry, you're not. You're going to live your best life now. For anybody who is looking for your Monday motivations, make sure to sign up for the newsletter. I'll keep you smiling, keep you going, and then we're going to push away those Monday blues together. Next week, we're going to talk about, because I need to obviously let you know, devotion is coming out. I am excited. I am a little nervous. I am a little bit of all sorts of things. Talk about stretching outside your comfort zone. It's all about this part. It's all about daring to believe. So every once in a while, I have to be careful because I feel like I have to swallow my own words and be able to be like, yeah, you said you're going to do this. Now we're going to do it. So we're gonna talk about devotional. We're gonna talk about daring to believe, which is what the topic is all about. Give you a cute little couple little insights on the book because it comes out Friday, 14th August. 
right around the corner. But above all, for those of you who are looking at, hey, how do we promote a book coming out? I'll give you some tips or things not to do, whichever ones you decide. But we're going to dare to believe. We're going to dare to truly dream. We're going to dare, my friends, to get to the next level. Life is all about what we do now. Life is how we do it now. And it's as big as we make it. So remember, if one of my biggest fears is driving that most people enjoy, thank you, Miss Debbie and Miss Kayla. I thank you. I'm glad you feel my pain. If it's all about our choices, it is all about the things that we do, then live your life to the best possible day. Whatever you define it, whatever you see it as important, it is. Take those steps, take those leaps. I'm so excited you guys joined me today. Have an amazing Saturday. It's middle of summer and pretty, if you're in Texas, you're probably burning a little. If wherever you're watching us from, whether it's morning or day or evening, happy Saturday, my friends. Enjoy it. Live your best life now. Stretch a little. Go outside your comfort zone. And I'll see you guys next week. Happy Saturday, everyone. Thank you.